Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to be here and to be able to teach you another Bible story. And you know the Bible stories are all true. And I'm sure that you all would say that if we were together. So anyway, I want to give you your virtual hug to tell you how much I love you. And I, maybe we'll be back together real soon. So I hope so. And um, then I, but we still have, we'll have to give a virtual hug for a little while, you know. And so, okay, but now I want us to pray because I have this wonderful story this morning. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you that I can be here this morning. Thank you for the boys and girls that are watching. Give them a real blessing, Lord, in, in learning this, another story about Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to the earth and for dying on the cross for us. So help us to really understand all about that. Father, I pray for our pastor and for um, and Mr. Sam Felton and for uh, Justin. Uh, and, uh, and I ask you, Lord, to take care of them, whether over in Africa and Rwanda and Congo, and I know that you know exactly where they are. Take care of them, Lord. Keep them safe from um, any illness and from accidents. And just help them to really be able to tell the people all about you and how much you love them. So, Father, now I pray you for myself as I teach this lesson and for the boys and girls that are watching and listening. Help them to really pay attention because this is the most important ver uh, stories, the ones I'm going to teach this Sunday and next Sunday, the most important stories in the whole Bible. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Now, you know that every, every time Jesus went around everywhere, he, he always had his disciples with him. Okay, and we've heard a lot about Peter, James, and John. And uh, they, they were with Jesus a lot. And people always said, well, Jesus must have loved them better. No, I think they loved Jesus better. And I think that Jesus saw that they loved him. And that's why he really wanted to teach them. And he had special things for John and, and Peter and James to do. You know, James and John both wrote books in the, um, in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament. And um, uh, let's see, John. Uh, and um, anyway, his disciples, these were the, really the closest ones to Jesus, okay? But uh, this, uh, in our lesson today, what Jesus did, he had two of his disciples with him. And he didn't, um, the Bible doesn't tell us um, what their names were, but we'll just say it was these two. And um, these two men were with him, and so he had a special job he wanted them to do. He said to them, I want you to go over into this nearby uh, town, and there you will find a donkey tied, and I want you to go and untie the donkey, and bring the donkey to me. And I guess they went, well, you know, for somebody just walking up and taking your donkey would be like, today if we said they was stealing your car, you know, because um, that sometimes a man would get on and ride his donkey places, okay? And so he said, if anybody tells you to stop, you tell him the Lord has need of him and he will let you bring the donkey, okay? And so these two disciples, <clears throat> most of Jesus' disciples, did exactly what he said. And so they went over into this nearby village. And when they got there, we'll have to change the scene now to the village, okay? You all are always patient when I change scenes, I know, when we're together. So they went over to the, to the village, and sure enough, see, you would say, like, how did Jesus know that somebody had tied their donkey there? Oh, that's because Jesus knew everything. And so here's the donkey. The donkey was tied up outside the man's house. And just standing there waiting, this is, was, must have been the man's house, and he had his donkey tied. Maybe he was going to go someplace that day. That's why he had him out there all tied up, ready to go. And so these two men came, and they uh, took the donkey loose, and 
they were going to start to walk away with the donkey. So here they are. We'll put the, oh, the reins in his hands, okay? And so, oops, the man is, <laughs> wait just a minute. He's got the donkey, and the donkey is, got, he leads, starts to lead the donkey away. Now you can imagine, the man saw this, these men coming and taking his donkey. So I guess he said, what would you say, stop thief? You know, Where do, what do you think you're doing? Why are you taking my donkey? And you know what they did? They said exactly what Jesus told them to say. The Lord has need of him. And this was a donkey that had never been ridden before. This was called even a colt, which is a, a baby donkey. But see, it, uh, a colt actually was as big as his mother. Uh, the, um, they, they grow really fast. So this was, and this was a donkey that had never been ridden. So these men, took the, and the man said, oh, okay, you can take my donkey and, and uh, take it to Jesus. And so that's what, that's what they did. So they brought the donkey to Jesus. Now we're going to have to go back to our first scene because when they brought the donkey to Jesus, Jesus was outside the city of Jerusalem. You know, Jesus had been doing all of these miracles, you know, to prove that he was the son of God. And so this was now going to be, many, many people believed that Jesus was God, that he was the son of God especially all the people that he healed. Blind people knew they had never been able to see. Now they could see. No man could do that. And crippled people could walk, and they could jump and run and everything, and they had never been able to walk. And see, none of their doctors could ever cure them of those things like that. People that couldn't hear also. Okay, so Jesus had a purpose doing these miracles, and the people that he did the miracles on, I'm sure that they believed. But, and also, people that saw the miracles, many of them believed. In fact, all of the people were going to Jesus instead of going to the, to the temple and asking the Pharisees and the scribes their questions. And this made the Pharisees and the scribes hate Jesus. See, they should have been paying attention to those miracles, and they should have been the ones that trusted Jesus. Well, anyway, now <clears throat> Jesus is going to present himself to them because they are the, the leaders of the nation, of the nation of Israel. So Jesus got on the back of this little donkey that had never been ridden before, never. And you know, if you've ever seen a rodeo or gone to one, or, um, if you've ever seen them on TV, you know, those horses buck. Oh, my goodness. And the cowboys can hardly stay on. And sometimes they get bucked off, you know. But you know what? This little donkey, it, let Jesus ride him. Because remember, Jesus could control the fish. He could control the wind and the waves. Oh, my goodness. And so he could control this little donkey. And so what happened is, as the people saw Jesus coming, these were all people that trusted Jesus. And they said, oh, what's happening? Other people, they said, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And so the people just came out by the side of the road to welcome him. Now, in those days, when a king came riding into a city where he had conquered the city, he would be riding on a big white horse and he would, and everything. But here comes Jesus and he's fulfilling the prophecy in the book of Zechariah that said, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and lowly, and riding on a donkey. And it even says, a colt. So, okay. And so the people, oh, they recognized it was Jesus. And they began to go to the trees. There was a palm. And they pulled down big palm branches, and they began to throw them into the road. And guess what? That is the way they would greet a king in those days. They would go out and put things down on the road, and some of them even <coughs> took off their, uh, their coats 
and threw them on the road to have a little donkey ride over, walk over them. And they were honoring Jesus. They were saying, Jesus is the king. And so they were greeting him as their king. And so <clears throat> the Bible says that there were even children in the crowd. And these children were all, you know, the children loved Jesus too, remember? Jesus picked them up and held them in his arms and, and, and loved them. And so they were in the crowd too. And the Bible tells us that they even followed Jesus all the way into Jerusalem and into the temple. Now, wait a minute. We'll change the theme. And so he rode the donkey all the way up and then into the, temp in, into the temple where the temple was. Okay. And we're just going to use this this morning for the temple. I, I couldn't bring so many different scenes. So Jesus went into the temple and this will be our temple this morning. Okay. And as Jesus went into the temple, the children followed him in. Children followed him in, still waving palm branches and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Oh my goodness. The priests and the uh, they didn't like that. And they said, what, what are you doing? Get those children out of here. You know, they always say, children are too noisy, you know. Get them out of the temple. Now, here was the main problem they had. When Jesus went in there, remember I told you the story about how Jesus cleaned out the temple that, back in our, one of our stories in the past? He went in and because they had animals in this beautiful temple. And they, uh, they had people uh, um, um, in there selling things, and uh, they were selling lambs and all kinds of animals in the temple. And remember, Jesus chased them all out and told them, my house shall be a house of prayer, and you have made it a den of thieves because they were cheating people. And they were making a lot of money, but they were cheating, other, cheating the people that had come. And you know what? Jesus found in the temple, and I couldn't bring all those animals again today because I want to go on with our story, but uh, Jesus cleaned the temple out again. And these men didn't like that. They didn't like that. They were the ones that were making lots of money, okay? And so, but Jesus went into the temple. Now, what Jesus was doing was presenting himself as the king of Israel. And these men rejected him. They said, no. No, we will not believe. And they asked him all kinds of questions, trying to trick him. They asked him all kinds of questions and uh, in trying to, you know, make a fool of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. And so Jesus cleaned out the temple again, and they definitely did not like that. And so but the, uh, now I want to show you a picture here. Who is this? Oh, my goodness. This is a man... This is one of Jesus' disciples. Oh my goodness, what's he doing there? This is, we, we haven't really talked about him very much. This is Judas Iscariot. And I want to tell you uh, what the Bible says about him. It says he was a thief and a robber. That means, okay, the disciples as they travel with Jesus, people that love Jesus would give him money or they would give it to the disciples. And Evidently, Judas was the one that was collecting all the money, and he was carrying it, you know. Maybe all the men, the other men, they didn't want to, I don't know how the men carried money in that day, but uh, maybe they carried it around their waist and under their clothes, I don't know. But I guess that was uncomfortable. So what they did is they would give it to Judas, and Judas was like the treasurer. He was the one who took care of the money. And you know what he thought? He thought that Jesus was going to set up his kingdom right then on the earth. And we know that was not God's plan. God's plan was that Jesus would die on the cross for our sins first. See, our, God's kingdom is going to come someday, but not, not at that time. 
See, and Judas, since he was a thief and a robber, you know what? I'm sure that he thought he was going to have a big, important job in, that, in, God, in Jesus' kingdom. And, but he began to notice that Jesus wasn't going to set up an earthly kingdom. I guess he thought, wow, what's he going to do? Just hang around here and, and keep healing people and healing people? And isn't he ever going to set up the kingdom? See, he was getting impatient, and he wanted money. And so what he decided to do, I think he finally decided, Jesus is not going to set up an earthly kingdom. I think all he's going to do is go around just healing people and you know doing things like that. And he wanted Jesus to set up the kingdom. So what he did is he went up to the temple, and he met with the men who were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he told them, he said, now, I, uh, I know you want to arrest Jesus, but if you do, the people will really be angry. And so um, if the people are going to be so angry, but I can show you a place where he goes, a private place where he goes to pray, and it's way off quietly. You can uh, get some soldiers, and you can go and arrest him, and the people won't even know that Jesus is being arrested. See, uh, these people were afraid to arrest Jesus. And so Judas, though, is the one that we say he's the betrayer. He betrayed the Lord Jesus. He told them, I can show you this place, and you can arrest him quietly. And guess what? These men were in favor of that. Because sometimes when they asked Jesus questions and they and it irritated Jesus, people would get mad at them and say, leave Jesus alone, you know? And so, um, and see these men too, were, they were used to people coming to them and asking them questions about the Bible, the Old Testament. And they didn't like it. Jesus was telling them the real meaning of all of those verses in the Old, uh, Old Testament. And they didn't like it that Jesus was doing what they wanted to do which was answering questions correctly. And so Judas said, I will show you that. And they said, okay, yeah, that's great. And he, so he said, but will you give me some money? Oh, he was going to betray Jesus and take money. And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. That's 10, 20, 30 pieces of silver because he was willing to betray Jesus. Think of all those three years now that he's been traveling around with Jesus. And instead of loving Jesus like Peter, James, and John, no, he was willing now to betray him. And so they gave him, and so these men then, they had to get uh, people together. Now at this time, uh, Jesus was going to uh, celebrate uh, the Passover. Now, you remember, um, I'll just show you this real quick. Um, back when they were uh, slaves in Egypt, um, they said, uh, you know, you have to, uh, Jesus told them, you need to kill a lamb and uh, eat uh, quickly because, uh, and put the blood on the, on the doorpost of your house. See there? On the doorpost of your house. Because at midnight, the death angel, death angel is going to pass over. And if there's no blood on the doorposts, the top and the two sides, then the oldest child in the family would die. You know what? Now I put this cross there because I wanted you to see that what I was doing, it was looking forward to Jesus coming and dying on the cross. Isn't that interesting? Now that they didn't know that. The people did not know that. They didn't know that it led to the cross or that showed the cross, but they just did what Jesus, told, what God told them to do, what God told them to do. And that night, at midnight, the death angel passed over them, the house, and all of the houses that had blood on the top and the two sides, the children were safe. But the Egyptians, the Egyptians didn't know that. They didn't worship God. And so they did not put, have blood on their doorposts, and the death angel, 
The children, uh, the oldest child in every family in Egypt died, even the child, uh, oldest child of Pharaoh. And so I just put that there to, to show that that's what it was looking forward to. And even though the people didn't know it, they did what God said to do, okay? And so they were safe, okay? I just wanted to put that up real quick just to show you. So, but every year, what um, Jesus' disciples would do is they would, uh, well, all the people in Israel, they would celebrate the Passover. Now, they didn't put blood on the doorposts, but they would have a special supper with lamb, and they would have uh, bread and wine, and they would... Um, have the bitter herbs and eat it, eat it quickly, you know, and they were they were remembering. See, God wanted them to remember what had happened back in Egypt. Okay, so now we'll take this down because the rest of our story does not take place in the temple. Jesus said to his disciples, "Go over into this nearby village, and there's a house there belonging to." And he told them the man's name. And I want you to um, tell the man that I want to eat the Passover supper at his house. So, okay, there we go. So we don't need, we'll say, okay, they came, came to one of these houses. And so now we're going to show the inside of the man's house, what it might have looked like, okay? I don't really know. This is what our artists think. Okay. And so... They said, I guess they said, well, what shall we say to the man? Say, tell him the Lord is going to eat the Passover supper at your house. Wait a minute. There we go. And so they went. And guess what? The man said, oh, yes, that's fine. Yes. Tell Jesus he can come and eat the Passover dinner in my house. Okay. And so we'll say this is the man's house. So they came, all, all of them, 12 of them, even Judas was with them. And so they came inside and they talked to the man, I guess, and the man said, well, I'm going to uh, tell, show you the upstairs room. There's a, a room upstairs. Evidently, this was a nice house because in those days, a lot of people didn't have big two-story houses like you all do. And um, so, uh, but anyway, when they, they brought uh, the Jesus uh, disciples in, and Jesus, and they went upstairs. The man said, you can go upstairs. There's a private room up there. And that's where you can, I've got that ready for you. You can eat the Passover supper. We know Jesus took his disciples and went upstairs, and they closed the door. And they had a private room all to themselves. It was upstairs. And it was just the disciples up there. And probably, oh, it might have had a window. But they, this was evening, and so they probably had the window closed. And um, maybe they had a, a, a nice carpet. It was a nice room. The man loved Jesus. And that's why he was letting Jesus use his room. Now, in those days, they ate, they ate, they didn't sit around a table and eat like we do, okay? They laid down on sofas, or, now, I don't know, you call it a sofa or a couch in your house? So they, they sort of laid down like this to eat. I know, I don't think I would like that, but I don't know. Anyway, so here we have. Jesus at the, at the table with the disciples. There's a famous painting that has Jesus and the disciples all sitting around a table like we do, but I don't think that was true. Guess who was there? Judas. Judas was right there with the rest of the disciples. Now, we know Jesus had 30 pieces of silver, and he had all this other money, too, that belonged to all the disciples, and he was sitting there at the table. And Jesus told them, one of you is going to betray me. And all the disciples began to say to each other, Lord, is it I? I don't know why they <laughs> doubted themselves. You know what Peter said? Peter said, Lord, I will not betray you even if I die protecting you. 
I will not let them, I, I just wouldn't, I will not betray you. And all the other disciples, they sort of said the same thing, oh Lord, we won't betray you. And you know what? Jesus said, let the one that's going to do it leave. And the, I guess they were busy talking, they didn't notice, but Judas did leave. He left and he went. And he now he was going, he sort of knew what Jesus would do after this. He probably knew that Jesus was going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And so he left and he went to tell the men in the temple how they could arrest Jesus. Now, next week, we're going to have um, another lesson. We're going to have the story of how Jesus was betrayed, how he was arrested and tried. They try gave Jesus a trial at nighttime. That's, nobody has trials at nighttime, but they tried Jesus at night. And they condemned him to die on a cross. And then we will also have the story of the crucifixion, which is a very sad story, but it's a wonderful story because on the cross, Jesus died for our sins. And it's kind of a sad story. And one time when I was telling it, I had children younger than you all, and a little girl started to cry. And I told her, I said, no, no, no. That's the sad part of the story what's going to happen on Sunday morning. Jesus, it, that's going to be the happy story. Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, and so right now, we're going to leave this scene. And now that whole last week that Jesus was here uh, on the earth, all of these men, these men were always out to get Jesus. They were always trying to trick him. And, um, in the, in the city, and no matter where he was, they would, um, I'll just take this down for the scene, but I just wanted to show you their picture. Look at them, how angry they are. See? And there's some of these, um, these men, too, that, were, that um, had talked. And so these men, they were all getting together and trying to trick Jesus. Do you think they could do that? No. Okay, we're going to close in prayer. Here's another virtual hug. But I want to tell you, we're going to pray now for Pastor and, uh, and um, Mr. Felton and for Justin. And someone asked me, well, why don't you tell Justin's last name? And you know what? I should. He has a last name, of course. But I don't know how to pronounce it. And I don't want to pronounce somebody's name in a funny way. So, okay, so... Don't you think that God knows when I say Justin? He knows which. There are other men in the world now today called Justin. Jesus knows who we're praying for, doesn't he? Of course. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do want to pray for our pastor and for um, Justin and for uh, Mr. Sam Felton. Please keep them safe, Lord. Protect them from um, things that would make them sick and protect them, Lord, as they're traveling around. Especially, Father, I pray that as they're uh, having a services there, uh, to, to tell the people about how much you love them and that you died on the cross for them, too. These are people, Lord Jesus, you know that they, they do not know you. So we pray for um, these men as they are telling the people there in Africa all about how you died on the cross for them. Bless our uh, Dan and, and the uh, people at church this morning. Uh, take care of them, Lord, and take, please, Lord, keep all the children well and their families. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hope to see you next Sunday. We're going to have the crucifixion story. Okay. Bye-bye.